for some, for, for everyone, there's something. That's, that's the point. From a thousand students that come, ultimately maybe one are ultimately really staying in these type of practices. You always have people that have the willpower, but then they don't have the character. Our organization, just like any other organization, it has a goal and the goal of our organization, let's say, is to bring the knowledge, the ancient knowledge that we inherit from 1,500 years of practice, to bring this a little bit more to this modern way of living because we think that there's quite a lot of different methods that can benefit the people in in various fields and just by looking out right now into the world I think it's necessary. So this is at the moment the group of disciples that are living with me here in the monastery and starting from January we have seven more coming <laughs> and they normally stay like one year some of them extend for two years and then after the two years they have to decide if they want to continue this path, then, then they stay even longer. I think it is of course adapted in the in the sense of we are located in Europe so there are some things we cannot make like in Asia but elsewise from the core we still try to stay as um, as authentic as possible so that means the ancient teachings we try not to change it in any way but to translate it also into a language where people here in Europe also understand it so that's also quite impo um, important. This is like our training place where spring, summer, autumn, winter, yeah, that's our best friend over there. There's quite a lot of um, different projects and a lot of work lying around everywhere. Because everything here we, we need to do by ourselves. Therefore, this small training room where we, where we will go uh, inside now in a few minutes, it's quite small. 
So therefore with all the students, they have to stay outside and do the training no matter how the weather is. So for example, right now you see it's not the, not the best weather, but you just need to train hard enough, <laughs> then it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, two ponies we also have. I think the most famous ponies from Shaolin. Hi. Yeah. So, yeah, we are quite a small monastery, even so that our organization we are existing since 1989 even, yeah, 1989, but it took a, took a long time. Yes, I started training with the age of four, but with the age of six, there were already a few people that were interested in the Shaolin arts. And so they started to just found a small martial arts school here in Kaiserslautern, where you're located at the moment. And yeah, after some time, the interest got more from people also to know more about the Shaolin Temple. And this is how the whole idea actually started to also get into contact with different masters that came from the Shaolin Temple in China. Then this was also the time where different Shaolin uh, warrior monks were traveling partly in the demonstration groups to have some exhibitions yeah and this is how it started so this is our only time right now december january where we have time for us and that also means that many of us are going into a, a personal retreat again which means you are deciding for yourself or you can also ask your teacher sometimes if you want to develop some special skill or want to develop yourself and then this means a retreat you go back and you train um, for quite a dedicated amount of time something very specific uh, and you're really only by yourself and not disturbed by any external circumstances try to avoid actually too much contact outside because this is like time that you are taking for yourself to just start the new year maybe as a new person maybe with a new body maybe with something different about you uh, and this happens every year sometimes there come bigger changes and sometimes uh, smaller ones Many people nowadays maybe think also you need to live in the monastery or maybe shave your head and be monk or live like a monk. Well, let's say like this, it helps. It helps because all of this only means that for some period in your life you don't care, let's say, what style you have. You're not interested to have a relationship at those moments. So at the end it's really just about that you have some dedicated time where you say, first of all, I invest in myself. One year, two years, three years. So. But ultimately, everything that we like, try to share from the methods in this monastery, everybody should be able to use it. Yeah, and this is why you see many teachers also like him. Yeah, he spent many years in the monastery with us. But meanwhile, he also is interested in other, other things in his life. Yeah, he's a good dancer, for example. Yeah. And so there are many ways how you can use what you learn inside uh, 
these temple walls for all the different type of stuff that you do outside. To live inside the monastery, this uh, has never been and will never be something for the mainstream. Yeah, only crazy ones like me do this. <laughs> <laughs> for some, for for everyone, there's something. So that's that's the point, and this is why it also makes sense then to. Why at all? I think there are methods that can be shared to the public. Yeah, it actually started, for example, with that one TEDx talk. Yeah, I can tell you, it was not a coincidence that I accepted this TEDx talk. I could see how things are going, were going to evolve. I knew what type of network that one single video would bring. And therefore I decided that right now I think it's a really, really good way of sharing something that I think is important. When I talk about the, the retreat and getting away for some time from this outside world, yeah, what does it mean? It really means you go, in our case, you're inside this monastery, you're not leaving this monastery, you are not uh, spending too much time, let's say, on the smartphone or on the internet, or even you don't watch any movies or any television or any shows. So you are very careful about where are you spending your time actually in those 24 hours day that you have. Yeah. Let's say winter time, you sleep eight hours, nine hours, okay? Still afterwards you have 15 hours. What are you doing with those 15 hours? Mm -hmm. If you're interested in the history of the Shaolin Temple, for example, the monastery in China now, it was actually burned down several times. So what does it mean that when an organization or a monastery is burning down, that means quite a lot of knowledge is also getting lost uh, in these moments because a big part of what monasteries are doing is building up a library. A library where a lot of knowledge is stored. And once it burns, well, all of this knowledge burns down. But this is then where sometimes the real life is also starting to merge together a little bit with legends. Because there are the legends that there were many masters who lived that time in the Shaolin Temple in China who started then to flee from the monastery and start to hide and travel the world as um, anonymous persons so that you couldn't find them. But what does it mean? It means that these people are still in possession of knowledge that once was in the Shaolin Temple and this is one of the missions that we are um, going after, so bringing back this knowledge. And afterwards, why is it so important, this knowledge? It is because we are talking here about 5,000 years of studying the human being. 5,000 years of asking questions about how does, the, how does the human function, how does our mind function. Yeah, how, what in the world outside is affecting us on a regular basis. How can we take influence by what we are eating, by what we are drinking, by what we are thinking, by how we are treating our body. How can we use all of this knowledge in order to bring benefit into our lifetime? Yeah, because this is no matter from which generation and what culture somebody is coming from, what is the same for all of us is that we have this physical aspect about us, which is the body, and this is the vehicle which is transporting all of us at this moment through this lifetime. So even if somebody is not interested at all in the philosophical aspects about these things, well, philosophy is just one way of trying to transmit something. Yeah. But what is this transmission about? It is about making the best out of your lifetime that 
has been given to you right now. Are you preparing the food already in the kitchen? Yes? Hey, but you know, poke bowl must be inside a bowl. True. Huh? Yes. Yeah, you know, and, and we don't have enough bowls. No, no, no. That's why I have to make it on plate. No, it's small. Oh, no. Yeah, you can. No, no, okay. This would be best. No, no, okay. This one can no, good. It's, in a way, it's their, their chance to, to follow up on all the teachings that we have here. And at the same time, the motivation is different. Uh, so I, I think everybody finds his reason why he wants to come. Some people come really for this personal retreat. They just come. Normally, the working hours are like five, six hours per day. And then the rest of the time you have for yourself. Yeah, so it's really good that our monastery is really run by a big community, actually. So without all this work, it would be impossible to make it. Yeah, and nobody gets paid here. That's also something <laughs> yeah, worth mentioning, maybe. Yeah, even so that they are brothers, but uh, in the past they had some serious fighting. That's why they're not normally separated. <laughs> Volunteers now, they're here already since one month, two months, some of them even half a year already. And at least my feeling is telling me that the reason why they are supporting this complete monastery and are supporting this type of approach is because they for themselves have the feeling that they can contribute to something that has purpose. Because it just makes sense. Because there is that sentence like to, to help other people, to contribute to something, not for yourself. This is something that can give you, uh, that gives you something. Only this type of work, only like community work can give you. It's different because when you are doing something for somebody else without expecting something for you, you give something without looking at yourself, actually. Or hold the pet. You can choose between holding the pet or guarding it. If you guard, yeah, you just close. Close. And look again. From a thousand pet, students that come, ultimately maybe one or two from a thousand are ultimately really staying in these type of practices. Because the big problem is always like this. You always have people that have the willpower, so they want. They, they really want it. But then they don't have the character. Then you have people which have really that type of character, that spirit of character that we were, let's say, looking for, the problem is, but he doesn't want to have this type of life. So to find a person who has the characteristics, so his character, let's say, is suitable, merged together with the willpower that he also wants this way of life, this is something very, very rare. 
it's very rare that something like this is happening. Many people want to achieve something great, yes, but they don't have the character to do it. All the disciples, all the students that I have here, why I want them to also learn about the martial arts. Because this is what it's about. You want to develop your body in such a way that you feel strong, that you feel vital. But not just that you feel like this, it's also important that you really are strong and vital in comparison to yourself if you would not do the training. That's important. So all this martial art training, it is about, in ancient times, it was about preparing and forging your body in such a way that you become a weapon or that your, your limbs, your body becomes suitable to use it as a weapon. It doesn't mean you have to do it. It just means you need to forge it like this, first of all. To express physical strength absolutely has an impact upon how strong your mind is. It's not the only one, but it certainly is like related. It's not important that you become a good fighter in this world. And it's not important that you become a good spiritual guide in this world. It's important that you find a way to live a pleasant life and in the best case, support other people that they also find the same. I used to play chess in the past mm. against the abbot. And yeah, it's sometimes also very interesting. Yeah. Mm, I absolutely think that chess is, has something to do with good strategy. Good strategy and how far can you maybe read the mind of the other person? What? So, yes. Okay. Sometimes it's not like coincidence when, when they are planning some things. If you don't know how the rules of the games are, if you cannot read the other person, if you don't even know yourself good enough, I think you're going to make quite a lot of mistakes in, in, this, in that game. And so there are a lot of similarities in, in that sense. Yeah? yeah. And probably this is one of the reasons why inside our monasteries people are playing chess. <laughs> yeah. Ultimately what it is about in the Buddhism or in the in the temple life, how we express it is with our thoughts, we create the world. This is one of the quite powerful sentences in the, in the Buddhist teachings. When you are able to impact your thoughts, when you are able to adjust your thoughts, you are able to adjust the world. This is what it means. How are you planning? How do you want to get to this area of becoming so fine, that you are only finding yourself in the world of thoughts. Now, and why the thoughts? Because with the thoughts you would change this world in the way how you imagine this world should be. So ultimately, what we talk about is, yeah, how do you want this life to be? Pleasant. Finished. 
pleasant. My name is Xie Yi. I am currently one of the masters who is teaching here in the Shaolin Temple Europe. Crazy ones like me. Did it. <laughs> Guys, I really hope you gained some wisdom and knowledge from the Shi Heng Yi mini documentary. This documentary was only made possible by your support. People heading over to mulliganbrothers.com and buying the Inspire Change t-shirts. People becoming members with a join button down below has made this possible. We took our whole film crew to the Shaolin Temple Europe to be able to film this. So I just want to thank everybody who has supported us so far. Over the Christmas period, we were shocked and amazed by how many of you guys wanted to support us by buying the t-shirts. Thank you very much. There is new offers on, new shipping rates on there. So head over there if you want to help support us. And one last thing, this has just come through the post from YouTube. Thank you so much. So this is the 100K plaque. YouTube, we're a little bit late. We're actually at 350K now on the interview channel, which is our second channel where you can find the full interview for projects like this. And that also helps support these projects. There's highlights on there. There's full interviews on there with the people that we interview. Um, and if you want to support us again, head over to this channel and go subscribe. Head over to my Instagram, at Jordan Mulligan Brother, to see what I get up to behind the scenes, who I'll be interviewing next, how I film these projects, how my team films these projects. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for your support. You've made this possible. Um, this is the start of the new year. It is the start of something big, and I want to thank you guys for the support. Have a blessed and productive day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>